Hello, hello. Thank you for tuning into the video. Today, the long-awaited Arctic real-time interrupt-driven concurrency framework. I was going to make the video about it some time ago, but I needed to update my knowledge due to recent changes from the version 0.5 to 1.0 of Arctic. So what is Arctic? It is an extremely handy framework to build bigger projects in Rust for embedded. It's not an operating system. These are the main features of Arctic. Task is the unit of concurrency. The task can be event triggered. It can be a software task. It can be a hardware task, such as an interrupt. You can pass messages between the tasks. You can set a timer queue. It's extremely easy to prioritize and preempt different tasks and avoid any sort of data race conditions by a very fine grained locking system. You would be amazed how simple it is to schedule events and make sure that different tasks complete without additional overhead of writing plenty of code and making sure that there is no crazy bug that causes a data race. For today, I was thinking to create a simple lab where we are going to have every discovery board with an LED blinking every 500 milliseconds. The code you're seeing right now is a functional implementation of Arctic, which we are going to digest right now. Starting from the cargo.tml, we need to import Cortex-M-Arctic 1.00. This is the newest version. Next, let's start from the beginning of the main.rs. As you see, we are using Arctic app. And the main difference is that we do not have hash entry point, but mod app. This is a very standard pattern of entering into Arctic environment. We specify a device where device is our peripheral module in the whole struct. Peripherals set to true allows us to access the device peripherals and core peripherals through the context. As we enter the module, something extremely important is to remember that we need to perform all the imports inside this module app. Arctic app has two types of resources, shared resources, as well as local resources. Shared resources are accessed by multiple tasks, but before you can use them, you have to log them. Local resources can be used only by a single task, and you do not need to log them before using them. As you see, we have hash shared and hash local to indicate which struct is local and which one is shared. The first function that is executed at the beginning is init. This is where everything starts. We create shared and local resources as a return, as well as a monotonic. There is also pre-init, but that's a different story. Init populates the context core and context devices with core and device peripherals. It allows us to define all the necessary shared and local variables that we used in our struct. And most importantly, init task is a critical section, which means no interrupt can be enabled to preempt pre-init or init task. So this has to complete and it is guaranteed to complete. Once init function completes, we have an idle task. Idle task is executed straight after init and it must never return. In the idle section, we can enable the sleep on exit mode, which means when the microcontroller have nothing to do, we can enter the sleep mode and wake up based on some interrupts. In this example, we can see that after the init, our function enters the idle, grabs the shared delay, grabs the shared LED, defines the 500 milliseconds in the loop. I H print blink because we will be able to see the terminal, but my F3 discovery board is connected to my laptop. And before we are able to say LED toggle, we have to first lock the resource from the context shared LED. Once we lock it, we can perform all the functions. Then we perform the same operation with delay.log and we perform delay.ms. Let's cargo build. Let's open OCD channel. I bring this up a little bit. 
and cargo run. And as we see, we have continuous blink, 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 which means the init function completed correctly and our Arctic framework is now stuck permanently, never ends the idle function. Our objective in today's lesson is to learn how can we create our own task, such as a hardware task that we can bind to a specific hardware interrupt on the interrupt controller and perform some action. It would be nice if we could enable the button that exists on a PA0 pin and make the LED stop for, let's say, a second or two, or notify us that the task has preempted the idle function. To do so, we have to check the reference manual of our F3 discovery. And what do we know is that the button, the user button, is available at GPIO A port 0. Port 0 is also connected to the external interrupts number 0. In this case, let's define the XT and Sys config variables as well as create our button. As we see, we are splitting the GPIO A, we are grabbing the PA pin with the button, and this is a standard configuration that allows us to enable the XT interrupt source as a button. We trigger on the rising events, and we would like to enable the interrupts to be happening. The next step is to create a function. Let's call our function an XT0 event. Each function has to be binded as a task, and in our case, it is going to be a task that is binded to XT0, and we are going to have a shared LED, delay, and a local button. But we didn't pass button as our local variable, and as we see, the Rust analyzer is making everything really, really red. To do so, let's create a button as a part of our local struct. It notifies us that missing button structure in the local. So let's pass the button. And it seems good. We are in a situation where we are passing the button as a local variable of the struct into the task that is going to handle XTI0 events. So what is going to happen in the XTI0? First of all, let's shorten all the variables that we have. Instead of referring to them as a context local, context share, context shared, Let's call them button delay and LED. And as you see, the type of a delay and LED is delay that needs to be locked. That is a very nice change in Arctic 1.0. To make sure that we really enter this function, let's perform a print saying button. The last step is to really make it a little bit more functional and visible on the board. Theoretically, we could have completed here and the print button would happen in the terminal, but something I would like to do here is to perform a multi-lock. What we see here is we are taking LED and delay into a tuple, we lock them together, we check if the button is low, we toggle the LED, depending on which state it was, it could have been on and off, then we wait for five seconds and we toggle the LED again. And once those operations are completed, we are clearing the interrupt. This means that once this operation is completed, another XT0 event can happen and be called. Let's cargo run, or maybe cargo build first. And that looks good. Open the OCD and cargo run. So what is happening? We can see blink, blink, blink happening every half a second. And right now I'm gonna press the blue button, which is the user button. And as we see, we have a notification that the button has been clicked and we have entered the special task, the software task. Arctic allows us to create tasks that we can bind to a certain interrupt names, as well as software tasks that don't have to have the interrupt binding. Those software tasks can be spawned by another task to perform an action. As an example, if you have an I2C or SPI interface and you would like to handle incoming packets, you can spawn a function to handle once you 
read the entire buffer. This sort of lab we probably have to do in a separate video because I believe that would be too much on the one go. However, I strongly encourage to take a look at the Arctic book because it is an extremely handful resource. One thing more to mention is that each task by default has a capacity of one, which means that you can call it only once, but you can increase the capacity to be two, three, four. And I believe there is a certain limit that might be specific to a certain platform you're using. This is something I'm not sure. Additionally, different tasks can have a different priorities that will preempt other tasks from being executed. This task is a priority of one because it preempt idle, which is zero. However, if there would be a task that has a priority of two, it would preempt our XT0 event at any time other than when we perform the locking. I highly encourage you to build your own very simple Arctic application and give it a shot. In the Arctic book, there is an example of a minimal app that is required to make Arctic application working. There are plenty of tips and tricks how to enable some more advanced feature or how to start a new project. One thing more I would like to mention is sleep on exit. That was a question asked in one of the comments under the previous videos. How can we make sure that our microcontroller enters the sleep mode when there is nothing to be done in the idle state? In this case, we need to perform two things and it's really hardware specific. We need to enable the sleeping mode in the core peripherals and in the idle infinite loop, we need to set the Arctic mode to be waiting for an interrupt. And in this way, we can put the microcontroller into the sleep mode between various interrupts that would be coming to it. Thank you for listening and thank you for watching today's video. This is all for today in topic of Arctic. If there is something related to Arctic that you would like to know, please leave the comment down in the comment section. Don't forget to like the video and most importantly, subscribe to my channel. If you know a community or someone who is interested in Embedded, I would be really happy if you could share this playlist with them. Before we finish, let's toss it back to one of the old embedded videos, which is related to cross compilation. It's quite interesting, quite important. Recently, I spent too much time trying to investigate why things don't work because I had the wrong target. So cross compilation and see you next week. Bye.